So a day was appointed, and the chosen prisoner was brought before the judge. The judge was Lord Hategood. The prisoner was faithful, and witnesses were called. Order in court. The first, whose name was Envy, took the oath. Then, pointing his finger at Faithful, he said, "My lord." I have known this man, faithful, for a long time, which was a lie for a start, and notwithstanding his plausible name, he is one of the vilest persons in the country. Superstition was the second witness. For myself, he said. I have no great acquaintance with the prisoner, nor do I desire to know him further. For in my talk with him, he did condemn our laudable religion as a thing of naught. <laughs> the third witness was a Mr. Pickthank. Oh, my lord," he said, "and you, gentlemen, all, I too have heard this fellow speak things that ought not to be spoke. He spoke contemptuously of our noble prince Beelzebub, and of his honourable friends, Lord Luxury, Lord Lechery, and Sir Hevet Greedy." He also railed at you, my lord, who are appointed his judge. He called you, I regret to say, an ungodly villain. It was clear by now that Faithful had been singled out by all three witnesses for their attack. So the judge addressed himself to Faithful. You have heard, sirrah," he said coldly, "how these honest gentlemen have witnessed against you. You are beyond doubt a vile runagate. Yet, in order that all men may see our gentleness towards you, let us hear." What you have to say, and your defence. I say then, said Faithful, that in my belief, your laws and religion are flat against the word of God. If you can prove me wrong, then I'm ready to recant. As to Mister Pickthank's allegations, I abide by what I said. Your prince. And his attendants, by this gentleman named, are fitter to be in hell than in this town. And so, the Lord have mercy on my soul. The judge, in summing up, quoted many learned instances to prove we know not what. Then he called on the jury, all lawful men and true. To consider their verdict, the foreman, Mr. Blindman, said, "I clearly see this man to be a heretic." Away with such a fellow," said Mr. No Good. "I," said Mr. Malice, "for I hate the very looks of him." A sorry scrub," said Mr. Highmind. "Hang him! Hang him!" said Mr. Heady. "Hanging is too good for him," said Mr. Cruelty. So they found him guilty according to their laws. And after manifold indignities, they burnt him at the stake. 
thus faithful met his end. But, says John Bunyan, the writer of this account, I saw in my dream that behind the crowds there stood a chariot and horses waiting for Faithful, who, as soon as his enemies had done with him, was taken up into it and wafted through the clouds to the sound of trumpets. So, in truth, he fared better than his friend, Christian. He would arrive first at the celestial city, and having been faithful unto death, the king would give him the crown of life. Where, all this time, had Christian been? Well, one of the men of the fair, whose name was Hopeful, was much moved by the calm deportment of the pilgrims. And while the people crowded round to see the execution, he succeeded, as sometimes happens in a dream, in spiriting Christian away to safety. And now, Christian and Hopeful travelled on together. Their way took them near the city of fair speech, and four of its untrustworthy citizens came out to salute them, bowing very low. We, too, are going to the celestial city, they said. We, we shall be glad of your company. Hopeful was for joining them, but Christian had heard of their city, that it was a place where money ruled and where religion went in silver slippers. He also recognised one of them as Mr. By-Ends, who had many rich relations. His wife was Lady Feigning's daughter, and he was friend to Mr. Facing both ways, and to Mr. Moneylove. So Christian whispered in Hopeful's ear, I like them not as our companions. And making their excuses, they hastened on ahead. A little off the road was a hill called Luca, and from it a gentleman called Demas shouted out to them, Ho! Turn aside! There's a silver mine here! With very little trouble, you'll be rich! Well, let's go and see, said Hopeful, hopefully. Not I, said Christian. I've heard of this place too, that it is dangerous. Not dangerous at all, said Demas, though he blushed with shame as he spoke. So Christian hurried Hopeful past. By now the citizens of fair speech were coming into view. They had no hesitation when Demas beckoned them. They were only too pleased to dig for silver. Oh, <laughs> lead us to the mine, they said. But as they looked greedily over the brink, we are told they lost their footing and fell in and were smothered by the damps that commonly arise. For certain, they were never seen again. As to Christian, though he'd been prudent then, his prudence didn't last, and he was soon to make a terrible mistake. Next time, we shall tell how Christian and Hopeful take a wrong turning and become prisoners in Doubting Castle. And we shall learn whether there is any escape from the hands of giant despair. <laughs>